The first human case of avian flu in Canada has been detected in British Columbia. Health officials say the person who tested positive is a teenager and that they're being treated at the BC Children's Hospital. Officials say it's rare to detect bird flu in a human, which is why they're conducting a thorough investigation into the source of the exposure. Let's now bring in Dr. Christopher Labos, epidemiologist and cardiologist. Dr. First off, welcome. Now, what do you make of this current case of bird flu? How rare is it? Well, it, it is rare. Over the past 20 years or so, there have been some 700 or 800 cases, human cases of avian influenza worldwide. So this is not something that is very, very common. Human infections have happened in the past, usually from people who are in close contact with birds, usually poultry farming and such. There have been a limited number of human-to-human -human transmission cases, but this is still not a virus that spreads easily from person to person. That being said, every time you do see a new human case, there is always the worry that the virus is adapting and becoming easier to infect, although we haven't necessarily seen any evidence of that just yet. How do you think it could have been transmitted? Well, we don't know. I mean, the most likely explanation is coming into contact with birds, usually poultry. I mean, we call this avian influenza for a reason. It is a strain of influenza that is often spread by migratory birds. They then infect local poultry populations and the people who work on farms who raise poultry because they are in close contact with the animals, they get sick themselves. In the same way that in the U.S., when all those cows got infected with this strain of influenza, it was often the people working on the farms who got sick. So you often will see animal to human transmission. What would be very concerning and what we haven't seen quite yet is sustained human to human transmission, which would obviously change the game entirely. So if I have chicken at home in the fridge or if I'm going to go to the grocery store tonight yeah. and pick up yeah. chicken, do I need to be careful? Uh, no. That being said, you should cook your chicken. You should still handle your chicken properly. The, the, you know, the, the number of people who do not handle meat properly and end up giving themselves food poisoning is much higher than you realize. It's not going to be an issue in terms of consumption because we cook our food. Very interestingly, when we were having the infections in dairy cattle in the U.S., um, drinking unpasteurized milk was potentially a risk factor, but drinking pasteurized milk, it was shown that the pasteurization process was killing the virus. So I don't think we need to worry about the safety of our food supply, because as long as we cook and handle our food properly, we'll be okay. I think there is some small concern for people who are in the poultry industry who have to have appropriate protective equipment, masks, gloves, etc., so that they don't get sick from their animals. But for the general population, this isn't, you don't have to worry about what you're going to have for dinner. Uh, it's a bit of a trendy thing to keep backyard chickens for some people. Mm -hmm. Do they need to be cautious? Yes, ish. I mean, here's the thing. You don't know. Again, if you're ha if you have one chicken and you are monitoring them and they're in a coop and you know that they're in, and you're you're in the middle of a city, it it's probably unlikely that they're going to come into contact with wild birds, right? I mean, the risk is always there. When you have a large farm, the thing about migratory birds is that we can't control them, right? They will fly anywhere they cross across international borders. I think you do have to be worried, though, if your chicken gets sick, because chickens do get sick. And if it does happen to be avian influenza by some risk, could they pass it on to you? Yes, I suppose that is theoretically possible. You have to realize that if you're raising animals, animals do get sick and you need to have the appropriate safety equipment and treat them properly. So that has to be in the back of your mind for the person who has one chicken in their backyard in the middle of a city. I, I don't know how high that risk would actually be in practical terms. Should we be making sure that we are washing our hands or perhaps taking other precautions just to be safe? So if you are somebody who's handling chickens, then yes, uh, washing hands probably has some role to play. Having a, you know, masks, especially an N95, especially if you're going to be in close contact with a large number of chickens over an extended period of time, yes. Um, you know, influenza is prim primarily a respiratory virus, so you're going to be breathing it in and passing it on uh, uh, amongst people, and especially when we're talking about the influenza that circulates among humans, that's especially true. With the with with animal to human transmission, it's more sort of equivocal because you do seem to need that sort of extended contact with your animals where you're either milking them if they happen to be cows or feeding them and taking care of them if you're chicken. So 
how much of it is airborne, how much of it is the close contact, how much of it is the handling. Sometimes very, very hard to tease out. So if you're a worker in the in this industry, the best advice is take all the safety precaution measures because you know you don't want to get sick with influenza because you know you often will will get hospitalized. And avian influenza in particular has proven to be very severe in some of the previous outbreaks that have happened. Not so much with this one, which is also a little bit encouraging. Mm -hmm, a little bit there. All right. Thank you very much, Doctor, for being here with us today. We appreciate it. My pleasure. Take care. That's Dr. Christopher Labos, epidemiologist and cardiologist.